The demographics in terms of younger people coming across. Tell us uh, what you saw earlier today uh, after the report where you saw the uh, churches busing them into deeper inside uh, the United States. Yes, uh, we talked to a church group, or uh, alluding to the report we filed last night that was on DrudgeReport.com. Uh, we talked to one of the church representatives who was busing the children. Then we went to another facility that they told us where they were housing the children, giving them uh, hot showers, giving them food, and preparing them to go on their next leg of the trip, wherever that may be. And we went to the facility. Uh, it was called Sacred Heart. It was a, a church there in McAllen. And there were people outside playing basketball. There was also some city workers out there. And I asked to talk to you know some of the facility advisors all of them were busy in a meeting and the guy said well you know you can't really talk to anybody right now but you know they they weren't harassing us they allowed us to shoot the footage which was good we didn't have any conflicts with that so hopefully we'll get the, that same texas hospitality as we continue along the border and just go to different locations of try to find out what's really going on and why this is not being reported in the mainstream news or if it is being reported it's being whitewashed as some humanitarian aid but you yeah. have to realize david because you have a lot of these children as reported i believe on breitbart the uh, last uh, last day or two or so uh, about a lot of these kids come in, they come in with gang tattoos on them. So mm -hmm. we're bringing in, bringing in uh, gang members. You know, of course, not all of them are, but we are bringing in known gang gang members. While we have gang members inside the United States, you know, all the all the time you hear about the shootings in Chicago, the shootings, uh, the gang shootings, the drug shootings that happen all the time right well, here in the United States. And now we're bringing more problems to our to our borders. I, I guess, uh, Jakari, the question I have is, uh, were you able to talk to anybody at these church groups because? Rather than, if they're, if they're interested in the welfare of the child, I would think that perhaps they might transport them back to where they came from to reunite them with their family, rather than transporting them further into the United States away from their family. Seems like they're not really aware of the, the bigger picture that's going on here. And that's one of the questions I asked to the lady I spoke to her off camera. She didn't want to be filmed. But she talks, spoke to me off camera, and she said, yeah, uh, you know, some of the families." send money to the children because that's one of the big questions I asked. I said, is the government involved in any way that you know of? She says, not that I know of. Most of the children or not all the children that she knew of that came here with their mothers, they were receiving money from family members who are already in the States or just from whatever uh, other source. So, you know, that's the question I had. But she said the people that at least she worked with had family members already inside the United States. Hmm, that's interesting. Well, and again, you know, you can always say that it's a humanitarian uh, position, but as I mentioned earlier in the news, there's a limit as to how much can be maintained in one country. And it's kind of like right. the situation when you're on an airplane and the oxygen masks come down, they tell you to, for the adults to put that on themselves first so right. they can help the children. And that's essentially what I see happening. And there's been Christian groups who have gone into other countries with missionary uh, groups and helped them build their infrastructure, help them to build their standard of living. But to say that we can take care of uncontrolled immigration in this country, it seems to me like uh, those people don't really understand what the bigger picture is. It's kind of misplaced compassion, I think. I think it is because the question is, let's say we do bring all these uh, Central American people here. If this country gets this bad, and then what's the next place where people are going to want to go? Why can't we help these people, you know, try to find out what the problems are in their country so they don't have to leave to another country? Just find out what the issue is in their location, whether it's uh, violence, if it's drugs, if it's whatever. Just try to find out what it is and stop it there so they don't have to immigrate to another country. That's true. One of the things destroying their countries, of course, is the war on drugs that we're pushing so hard. The other thing is the uh, bankers. And, of course, even in Hugo Chavez's socialist paradise, they were giving the bankers 700% return on their investment. So that is the bankers, it's the wars, it's the war on drugs that are destroying these countries. And yet we're not addressing any of those root causes. They were just making it worse and bringing the collapse into this country. And that's by design. Well, thank you, Jakari. We're going to look forward to your reports. Uh, hope you can uh, get some more information. That's a great find that you had. Unfortunately, it's it's sad to see that happening, that they would uh, you know, send these children further into the United States. Uh, even if their family is here, I would think that they would be able to be re reunited with them. I've seen a lot of stories of very young children who were separated with their, from their parents who were remaining behind in Central and South America. Well, you know, you hear the stories that sometimes the parents come first and then send for the kids second, or sometimes it goes in reverse. So regardless, a lot of these children are being separated from their parents, from their families at some point along this trip. Yeah, I, I would think that uh, in America, if Americans did that kind of thing to their kids, of course, Child Protective Services would uh, take them away. Would be probably. all over. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Exactly. exactly. Okay, well, thank you, Jakari. We'll be looking forward to more reports. All right, thank you, David. Bye-bye. You can also help us and help yourself by checking out InfoWarsStore.com where you can get Survival Shield X2 and great health products like 
water filters to get the glyphosates as well as the fluoride out of your water, whether you're on city water or you're on well water. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. And now you can protect yourself from corrupt cops with the InfoWars dash cam. It's your car's black box that records all that the driver sees and hears. And introducing the Block It Pocket. It renders your phone undetectable while protecting your private data and your health. Or take back your privacy and protect your personal information by getting your very own detractor cell phone pouch. So get incredibly high quality freedom-based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. You may not know our next guest by name, but you probably do know him if you're watching the show a lot. You may know him from the coffee he makes and helps bring to you. Um, this is one of the many products that we sell that help fund our operation, help us grow, and help us um, you know, get new listeners, uh, hire new reporters, send them all around. But the Wake Up to a New America, we got the Patriot Blend and also the Immune Support Blend over here with has several types of mushrooms in it that help promote... Uh, you know, the immune system and keeping your immune system strong. And uh, we started selling this, I don't know, maybe less than a year ago now? Was about October, November. Yeah. And uh, it's been huge. It's been a big, uh, a big boost to the operation here. It's part of the InfoWars lifeline. And, uh, you know, you can get them by going to the store and checking them out. But we're not here to talk about coffee. But I just wanted to bring this out just so you you're have a little context before our next guest is it's Steve St. Clair of InterHealth Botanicals. Um, you may even try his inner food, which I've been taking for years, even before I worked here. Um, I had heard the ads, and I'm like, well, I'm going to try it. And uh, I was had an interview earlier in the week with George uh, Humphrey, and talking about when you put things in your mouth and you could taste the energy in them, you could taste the energy in inner food. And uh, if green has a taste, it is definitely in the inner food. Uh, welcome <laughs> our guest, Steve St. Clair. How, how are you doing? Thanks. I'm doing great. Yeah? I'm doing great. It's a wonderful day. And are we keeping you busy with the coffee? Production? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, and I hope everybody's waking up, you know, with the coffee every day. I mean, it's great coffee. It, it really is. And you were telling us, uh, uh, you have a, a coffee roaster. You have one oh, yeah. person who works on this and she She's essentially being channeled by Alex every day. Oh, absolutely. She's, she has Alex on every single day. She's just goes, she's wild about it. She goes, oh my God, this is such an honor to do this with Alex. for Alex, for everybody. She said, you know, this is just wonderful. She couldn't think of a better job. I mean, can you imagine, like, if just the people of Starbucks were roasting their coffee, listening to Alex every day? There'd be a whole new outlook on life. I think, uh, there, with all this. A whole new outlook, whole new energy, yeah. you know, being d delivered by the coffee it would just be awesome. Yeah, and this is really good stuff. I drink both of them equally, and, uh, you know, I can't say enough about it. It's um, from Mexico. It's fair trade. Um, you know, it's organic. I mean, you're really going to get the best bang for your buck with this. Oh, it's good stuff. We we import this from Chiapas with the the growers down there. We pay them fair prices and you know, we we we're in control of it from 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 bush to bag. Yeah. <laughs> and not the bad bush. We're not talking about <laughs> bush here. Yeah. So, how did you get started in this world of of, you know, trying to uh, create products that are going to be healthy for people? Like what got you started into this? Well, it started uh, about nine years ago. I was looking for s something to do that was more in line with my belief system at that point. And I wanted 
I just stumbled upon the, the formula. We came up with a formula for Interfood. That's how we started the company. And we wanted to get healthier products into people that would give them energy, hopefully open their mind up a little bit so that they could actually uh, gain different perspective maybe. Uh, get them healthy to get them off the couch mm -hmm. kind of thing. And it is a process of, of waking up. It's not just getting the information. It's also having the energy to do something with it. And, and part of that is detoxifying the body so you can accept this information because it's not the same, um, you know, hostess, Twinkie type uh, information that if you just keep <laughs> cramming it in, well, you'll get full eventually. Absolutely. And, and the inner food is, we, we get more comments about the inner food than any of our other products still to this day about how it's changing people's lives and the, just the nutrition, the dense nutrition that people don't get. Uh, we formulated this for the basic American lifestyle, too much stress, not enough sleep, poor nutrition. And uh, inner food helps you get on the right path, you know, it gets you going down the, the pathway to health. If, if you had an inner food beer, I'd probably drink it, definitely. Because <laughs> I, I do a lot of tubing down the river with my family. We found that that's one of the, our favorite things to do. And, but, but one of the, the drawbacks of that is instead of drinking water, I drink too much beer. And then the next day I feel guilty about it. So I, I take an extra scoop of the inner food and throw it in there. Uh, inner food's a great way to end the day when you have a day like that and start the next day. I, I do it every day. I'm, I'm kind of a purist, so mm -hmm. I just water some what? cayenne. Okay. <laughs> I mix it with a lot of different things, uh, mainly because I'm lazy and I don't want to do a bunch of different stuff. But I do have my own recipe. I call it Yoda juice. Yoda and, juice. Uh, there I you make go. the kids drink it every once in a while. And, yeah, and yeah. you know, by calling it Yoda juice, it seems cool. And uh, so you Absolutely. can get your kids to drink it and Absolutely. give them that, although they don't need much help uh, getting energy these days. Right. So earlier we were talking, um, I said, you know, what's on your mind? What are, what are the big things that you want to talk about? And you were talking about the Ukraine uh, system may just be a whole front for a new business opportunity, essentially. It could be. I've, uh, I've just heard recently, I know some guys in the oil field, and they were telling me that... Uh, Big oil is building pipelines from Eagle Ford and, and some other big fields because they're just burning off all that gas. Mm -hmm. And they're building pipelines to Port O'Connor and Corpus Christi, and they're building, you know, multi-billion dollar LPG facilities there. So they liquefy the gas so you can ship it. Mm -hmm. Well, where are you going to ship it to? Who's buying this? Right. Well, if they cut off the gas supply from Russia, then, geez, that's... Instant market. What he's talking about is cutting. Russia was going to cut off. Talking about cutting off the gas to Ukraine and those and the other areas, Eastern Europe, and the other markets in there. And uh, if they do that, they're going to need to get it from somewhere. And oh, That's look right. here, here we go. Here, here comes the hero. <laughs> here, here, uh, you know, here comes the the U.S. providing now instead of being a a, a a consumer of those products. Now we're exporting them out and kind of changing the way it, it's been done in the past. That's right. And we, you know we have a lot of energy here. They've been finding uh, gas fields everywhere, and oh, yeah. I just you know watched. Uh, I hadn't watched it. I'd, I'd seen the previews of that, that documentary, Gasland, mm -hmm. about how um, they've basically spread out the pollution areas into such small little footprints that they're almost undetectable. But when you add them all up, all it's huge. And and these gas fields, I was uh, looking at with our one of the producers here, Buckley, was looking at his area where his his relatives have some land. And he said, zoom out, and you could just see all the little gas wells. And they said they poisoned his, uh, one of his relatives' wells was poisoned. And, you know, at some point, we got to look at a better way to get the fuel out that we need, because we have to have fuel to run the economy. Well, Unless we're going to, are we going to go back into the Stone Age? But we have to look at better ways to doing it. There, there's cleaner agree. ways. There's always absolutely. a better way to do something. Um, you know, when they're spraying the Nauco product Corexin all over the oil spill in the Gulf. Well, they have microbes that can do the same thing. same thing. My dad was working on this project with some people, but they were small companies and they couldn't even get time with the government to show them, hey, look, we got a way. We, we're, we're breeding microbes that we throw them and they eat the oil and they turn it into, I think they turn it into carbon dioxide and water. Or uh, it, it might even been oxygen. I think they turn this stuff into oxygen. I mean, it is mind boggling the technologies that are out there if we just give them a chance and don't go, 
Well, we got to spray turpentine on it because well, that's yeah. going to fix the problem. Uh, yeah, the, I mean, what was the bidding process like there? Uh, there, there wasn't one. Oh, I'm it's, sure there was, wasn't. There Nowco wasn't. was in the pipeline it's, already. Boom. It was, and and it was weird. At that time, I was in Chicago touring an old Nowco factory. They were uh, they were working with the Army doing uh, uh, mock disaster drills, and they happened to be using Nowco.